It's Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. Coming up on the big show tonight, Phoenix Rising remains perfect on Dollar Beer Night. We're looking back at a fantastic Friday night. Playing for club and country, it is what every soccer player dreams of. Two Phoenix Rising players are doing just that right now. And the Phoenix Rising player who dominates the pitch and the ice, Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday starts right now. Welcome everyone to Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. I am Mitch Carr. I'm alongside Cheerson Susell and Kristen Keough. Hey guys, we're catching up on our favorite local soccer club coming off another dollar beer night win and it was a fun game. Another successful dollar beer night in the books and head coach Rick Shantz will be on the phone with us coming up in just a minute. But first we begin tonight with a look at your hot headers. The rising staying pretty darn good on dollar beer night this week. Adam John getting things going in the 11th minute with a beautiful goal to open the scoring. That's his sixth goal in five matches. John then turn provider assisting on Junior Fleming's goal to make it 2-0. The Rising going on to a 5-0 win over Tulsa. In international soccer, Venezuela beat the United States men's team 3-0 in a friendly today. The Americans begin their Gold Cup run a week from Tuesday, and uh, I'm sorry to say, it is not looking so good right now. The United States dropped their match in a friendly against Jamaica on Wednesday. Phoenix Rising midfielder Kevin Lambert assisted on the Jamaica goal. We'll have more on the Gold Cup later in the show. Time now, though, for the coach's corner. Unfortunately, head coach Rick Schantz could not join us in studio this week, but he is on the phone. Coach, another dollar beer night, another dominant performance. What are the chances that every home match can just be dollar beer night? Is that possible? <laughs> yeah, definitely. We've asked about it, uh, <laughs> and I, I thank you guys for letting me call in. But it's uh, dollar beer night seems to be good. The players understand that it's, uh, it's going to take on a life of its own, and obviously our fans love it. I, f I feel like it's going to be a major letdown if the time ever does come that dollar beer night does not end uh, in a win. Yeah, uh, and Coach, you were out there in that black suit hot as heck. How, how was that? Uh, at this point right now, I don't think I have a choice. My daughter said that uh, I wore a tie four games ago and we got a win, and uh, she's been picking my tie out uh, ever since. And it's uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of a tie without a sport coat, so... Um, it, let's just say that after the game, it was nice to have a, an ice cold dollar beer. <laughs> Coaches can consume it too. All right, everybody's in on it. You're, okay, so you're second in the Western Conference right now, though, but all the teams at the top are pretty close. You haven't lost, um, you know, a league match in over a month. Um, so can you talk about just where you guys are standing right now? Yeah, we, we spoke about it before the game, and I told them that they, the guys have worked really, really hard. You know, they've they've become committed to what we're trying to get them to do. Uh, they're, they're all starting to get on the same game plan, and the results are falling into place. But, you know, much like, uh, like we are in school with our grades, it's really hard to stay at the top. But, you know, one bad performance, and you can drop uh, a few grade levels pretty quick, and it's the same – in the Western Conference right now. So we just have to stay focused. Right now we, uh, we're, we're kind of over the last game and we're already concentrating on Orange County coming up. And um, it's get better every game. That's the goal right now. That's all we talk about. Get better, stay focused, and, uh, you know, and, and we'll be okay. Coach, you'll be without Kevin Lambert and Junior Flemings for the rest of the month at least. How are you going to cope during that time? <laughs> you know, it's never easy. Uh, to lose players of that quality, but we know that when we built this roster, um, that we have plenty of guys that can step up and perform. And uh, like I've told uh, told other people, that you, you don't you don't look for somebody to to be Junior Flemings. You don't look for someone to be Kevon Lambert. What you look for is the whole team to play, you know, just a little bit better. Uh, and if if everybody gives us just a five or ten percent better and the next guy comes in and does his job then we're going to improve um hopefully we, we do so well and we keep improving and, and performing that when Kevon and and junior come back that it, it might be difficult for them to get back into the lineup 
if that's the case, we've done a really good job. All right, that's head coach Rick Schantz. He's joining us on the phone. We thank you very much, coach. We look forward to seeing you in studio next month. And, hey, looking forward to seeing you out on the pitch against Orange County. That's Rick Schantz, head coach. You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you. All right, thank you. Phoenix Rising, 6-2-5 and five in second place in the Western Conference, just two points behind New Mexico United. Now, we mentioned the Gold Cup earlier, beginning next week. Well, FIFA Women's World Cup already underway. Kristen, it started in Paris with the host nation. Yeah, South Korea taking on the host nation, which is France in the Women's World Cup. France struck first in the ninth minute with the earliest goal of a World Cup opener. They went on to a 4-0 win. The U.S. not in action until Tuesday when they take on Thailand. And they say they are ready for anything the tournament throws at them. We thought coming to France we would be facing very hostile environment, mm -hmm. um, which we still expect. But yesterday we were welcomed very warmly into um, the city. And uh, today we were wor welcomed on the training pitch. And I think it was um, very surprising and special to see um, the support that we have here and um, kind of a testament to what this team has done over the years to cultivate a global audience. I think that the team is in a great place. Um, in friendly games, in the turn in the tournament, in the send-off tournament, um, there was a lot of hype and buzz and media going on, and so I think that we started to amp up a little. But lucky for us, we had 10 days in a pre-camp in England that was just in an oasis, um, and it was an, a really special time for the team to decompress, be away from all the noise, come together, just eat, breathe, live football. Mm -hmm. um, and now being here, it's about time to turn up again. I love that. Time to turn up. Absolutely. And this is going to be one really exciting Women's World Cup. Of course, US, the U.S. is ranked number one in the world, but there is some really tough competition. And some people even consider this to be or could potentially be the most competitive Women's World Cup that has ever existed. I don't see why not. They've all been pretty competitive. I remember 2015, Carly Lloyd from half field. The United States just ran Japan out of the building. That was incredible. We all hope for a repeat performance for that, but England is ranked third in the world. France has worked for, ranked fourth in the world, and they are playing at home. So it, it's kind of hard to predict. And Sweden is in the same group as the United States, which is Group F. It's the final group. And, uh, I mean, Sweden always gives the United States a tough time. And quick shout out to uh, some people from Phoenix, Julie Ertz, as well as uh, Jessica McDonald, who uh, will be representing Arizona. All right, let's check out the forward line for a look at the key upcoming dates on this schedule. The rising host Orange County next Saturday, followed by two straight on the road at Reno and OKC. Our next episode of Soccer Sunday is July 14th, same time, 11.05 p.m. But what is everyone saying on social media tonight? Let's check in with Kristen as she is checking out some of her favorite soccer grams. Kristen? Well, we got to start with this one from Rising themselves saying, Happy Sunday. How are we feeling this morning? Well, obviously, everyone feeling great after Friday night's game. Got to love this, too, in case you missed how the players were celebrating with each other. This is adorable they probably wouldn't like me calling it that but it's it's so sweet it's just such an amazing moment here the guys walking arm in arm linking arms on the field clapping getting the crowd going the energy was just so amazing at the field on friday and this is probably my favorite thing on social media I'm not saying we're the greatest team on earth, but we are the greatest on Dollar Beer Night, 11 0 So remember, use hashtag uprising, and we want to find your tweets, your social media posts, so that we can put them right here on Soccer Sunday. Now, something to look forward to, winter in June. It is coming at the end of the month as the Arizona Coyotes team up with Phoenix Rising for Coyotes Night at Casino Arizona Field. And it turns out rising goalkeeper Zach Lubin knows a lot about hockey because he played that sport first. I caught up with him on skates. Zach, thanks for hanging out with us. This is a good place to be in June in Arizona, right? It's perfect. Just got done with training. Come here. It's cool. It's cold. They're going to be in short sleeves. It's nice. Yeah, it feels really nice and brisk. So Coyotes Night is coming up, of course, and you have a good reason to be excited about this because of your time as a hockey player. Can you tell us about your history in hockey? I grew up playing hockey. I uh, spent my whole life. Our city parks were always frozen over, and hockey was a big deal in Bozeman in Montana. So I played there until I was a senior in high school. 
and I also spent a year playing in Canada. So soccer and hockey, but I was surprised to learn that you were not a goalie in hockey. Why is that? I, don't know, I guess I started as a center in hockey before I was a goalie in soccer, really. But I just don't think anyone could be a goalie in two different sports. Like, I had to score some goals and I had to, uh, you know, have a little be, be the hero at some point because uh, being a goalkeeper is not easy. Growing up in Montana, it seems like you really love the outdoors. I've noticed that when I'm looking at your social media and just chatting with you. And recently, you and some of the other guys went up to the Grand Canyon. Tell me a little bit about finding your time in nature here in Arizona. It's been like such a pleasant surprise uh, coming here. I didn't really expect to be able to do so much outdoors, but quickly last year I realized like there's so much hiking and outdoor stuff to do. Like I go up to Sedona and camp a bunch, hike, uh, go to the surrounding lakes. It's been awesome. Um, so yeah, just last weekend we had a bye weekend. Uh, took six guys up camping. None of them had ever been camping before or anything. So to like share that experience with them and give them a little taste of like how I grew up with my family, like going camping, sitting under the stars, having a fire was uh, was pretty special and like a good little bonding like moment for us. On your Instagram post about the Grand Canyon trip, uh, John called you dad <laughs> with the heart eye emojis. I need to know uh, why. <laughs> hey, I was, you know, I was dad Zach this weekend. You know, I was making sure all the guys were taken care of. I was driving the RV. How do you stay focused when you're playing so well and you, you know, you don't want to just take it for granted that you're going to go out and get a win? We're so short in the season. We're like maybe a quarter of the way through. We have so many more games and we have goals. And even now, we haven't met the standard that we would have liked to be at at this moment. Our goal is to host the USL championship because in the past five or six years, every team that's hosted has won. The crowd at home games has got to help, but especially on nights when there's an extra reason to get excited, like Coyotes night. So how does it make you feel when you have a collaboration like that and you have the support of another organization in the Valley? Uh, it's, it's great to know like that we are supported, even though we're not a top league team, you know, like the Cardinals, the Coyotes, uh, the Diamondbacks, that like we're supported by the Valley and that they see us you know, as a top tier team in, uh, in the Valley and that, you know. So you guys, um, those pictures that you saw, those were actually from Joe. He took those on the trip and that video as well. And I just think it's hilarious that they just have so much fun and they joke around so much on social media like you saw John with the hard eye emoji and all of that. It just shows that they're more than just you know, teammates, they are true, true friends. And it's awesome to see that. I would have loved to see how the whole camping trip went. Bunch of guys that had never been camping before. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> with Zach yes. running the no, show. No, I'm, I'm very thankful that there, there was, running there was the video show. and photos, but I wish there was a little bit more. Yeah, well, they all came back safely, so Zach did a good job. But Coyotes Night, again, coming up on June 29th, and these are the custom Coyotes Kachina training tops they'll be wearing. There's going to be appearances by Coyotes personalities. They're going to do some giveaways on social media. That, again, is coming up on the 29th taking on the Timbers at 7.30 p.m. And then the kits will be auctioned off after the game, so we'll have details on that uh, on social media as well. All right, there are times when you do not want to hit the crossbar, like, you know, any of the 90 minutes during a game. But after practice, different story. Who's the Rising's reigning champ? You're going to find out. And it's not just the senior team that is racking up the wins lately. A team from the Rising's youth organization is also making history. And when the Gold Cup kicks off next weekend, there will be 26 players from the USL on rosters across the competition, two of them from Phoenix Rising. Junior Flemings and Kevin Lambert were sitting down with them to find out what it's like to play for both club and country. But first, at the beginning of the season, we asked you for your questions for Phoenix Rising players. It could be anything, so here is one from a young fan named Colton. My name is Colton, and I'm from Gilbert, and I want to know who is the greatest soccer player in the world. What's up, Colton? The greatest player in the world is Leo Messi. Why is that? And he's just the best. He's just unstoppable.
Welcome back to Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. The 2019 Gold Cup begins Saturday. And if you're not familiar with the tournament, it involves national teams from all over North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. The Jamaican team has been to the final of the last two Gold Cups, 2017 and 2015, and this year they hope to win it. They're going to have two Phoenix Rising players to help them do it. So in tonight's goals, let's learn what it's like to play for both club and country. Junior Flemings and Kevin Lambert like Phoenix, but they love home. Jamaica. Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, the culture is just different. Food. You know, the food. Beach. Beaches, you know, sunshine, everything. <laughs> and what's not to love? They even speak their own dialect of English called Patois. Jamaican would say, you know, we're going to mash it up. You know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, we're gonna deal with it, man. We're gonna deal with it. In just one week, Lambert and Flemings will mash it up wearing the green, gold, and black of the Jamaican flag. Whenever you put on those colors, put on that jersey, the black, green, and gold, you know that it's, it means something different. It's another level. But it's not just you, it's not just your family. It's a whole nation. That one was Kevon Lambert. Lambert has already made the nation proud. Lambert rolling it ahead to Nicholson. Assisting on the only goal in Jamaica's 1-0 win over the United States in a friendly on June 5th. Flemings just found out about his selection to the team on June 6th. Being called up to your national team, you know, is huge. It's a lot. I mean, there's a lot that's in there to bring in your shoulders and all of that, but I mean, it's a great opportunity, you know. It's another opportunity for you to go out there and showcase your talent and, you know, to show what you got. There's also the thrill of competing against the best that this part of the world has to offer. Going out there with a fellow country, man, I mean, it's like, as they always say, like, nation against nation. It's, it's war, basically. Those are opportunities of a lifetime. I mean, you want to represent a national team. You want to play at the highest level for the national team, especially in the biggest tournament in North America, you know, like the Gold Cup, where playing against the, uh, the U.S., the Mexico, or the Costa Ricas, you know, like, you're playing against, like, top players that are in Europe, you know, playing at the IS-11. So, you want to, if not match up or do better than what they're doing to say that, you know, like, you can compete at the highest level. Twice, Jamaica has made it to the Gold Cup final, losing to Mexico in 2015 and losing to the United States in 2017. Kevin Lambert was on the 2017 team, and he believes it made him a lot better. I was much younger, and, um, that kind of like put me at the next level, that kind of put me um, where I am today. He wants Jamaica to take the next step as well, to win the Gold Cup after two near misses. Even if they don't though, he'll come back to Phoenix Rising a better player. For sure, I can't wait. All right, so that's great news for Kevin and Junior. You can see Jamaica's first group stage match next Monday against Honduras. The team has a third Jamaican player, though, Jason Johnson. Unfortunately, he is injured. He won't play for Jamaica nor Phoenix Rising for a few months. Yeah, and we miss him, and we're going to miss these other two while they're gone too, Cheerston. Absolutely, but hey, the pros aren't the only ones within the Phoenix Rising organization to have success. A team out of its youth league has recently made history on the soccer field. Tonight, we are rising up with the future stars of the Phoenix Rising. The Phoenix Rising boys ECNL team is being recognized for making history. The Dallas Cup is considered one of the largest and most elite international youth soccer tournaments. And in its 40 years of existence, no team from Arizona had ever won it. This group would change that. Everybody got together and we're like, oh, we're the first team in Arizona to win this. And that's when everybody went crazy, celebrated in the locker room. We came into it just hoping to put up solid performances each game. And we came out on top and it was something that I'll remember forever as long as the rest of the boys will. It was just unlike anything we've ever experienced before. It's almost one of those things that's kind of a, just a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, I mean, not to even tie a game, uh, to win every contest. They had to win four games at the end of the day, four games in less than 72 hours, less than three days. So for that in itself, it made it even more special that they obviously accomplished what they did. A special experience, a special team deserving of the recognition. I, I, I would honestly say I'm a pretty tough uh, coach when it comes to standards and levels, and this group has exceeded all of it. And the group is not only proud of their success, they're proud to be a part of the Phoenix Rising. Because you feel like the whole uh, like Phoenix Rising is like supporting us on this accomplishment that we're forever going to remember. I think our players are starting to see a lot of benefit from them. Uh, we've got three players 
on the present team uh, from the O2 team that just won the Dallas Cup that's been already kind of called in to just train with the, the first team uh, for a week here and there. And um, it's one of those that those are the things you want to see first is that kind of integration of path to pro. Just even being able to practice with the first team, like it's just an awesome experience. Just the whole Phoenix Rising organization is just, I'm so proud to be a part of it. Now the team is heading to Chicago for the playoffs at the end of the month. They didn't make the playoffs last year, so they said they're definitely looking to make a run this time around, and I think they have the talent to do that. Maybe some future rising players right there, yeah. too. Well, they call it crossbar challenge. You know, the game where you try to hit the crossbar. We're going to show you who the rising's reigning champ is at this game. Welcome back to Phoenix Rising Soccer Sunday. Time for a rising rewind. There are ways to score a goal, and then there is this. From the May 25th game at Salt Lake City, the ball is deflected off of John Bakerow's butt, his butt, and it bounces past the keeper. Rising beat the Monarchs 4-2. That's pretty good. Rewind it now to May 18th against Las Vegas. Great night for Phoenix Rising. They score four goals and shut out Las Vegas 4 nothing. Cue the backflip. Oh, yeah. Gotta love that. Quite a win considering Rising had just lost three days earlier in a U.S. Open Cup match to New Mexico on penalty kicks. A fantastic memory, but hey, just for kicks, players mess around after practice playing crossbar challenge. So do coaches. Rising assistant coach Peter Ramage pulled off one heck of a trick. And then, of course, he tweeted it out saying when the kit man says, hey, Rambo, bet you can't hit the crossbar on the volley. He says, oh, yeah, pass me the ball. Not once, but twice. Of course, he had to say, sorry, mate. And yes, video replay confirms two crossbars in a row. I don't think he was sorry. Not even a little he bit. He was not sorry. <laughs> he doink, loved it. Doink, double doink. That's pretty good. All right, so next Soccer Sunday, July 14th, next Rising Home match Saturday against Orange County. And do not forget, we got this thing, June 29th against Portland. It is Coyotes night. And look at the special Coyotes kit. Kristen, tell us about yeah, this. Yeah, so the Kachina pattern, the tribute to Kachina here, because with the Coyotes and all of our fans, we absolutely love Kachina because it reminds you of being a fan years ago before they changed the logo officially. So it's not just a Coyotes jersey, it's throwback. So it's going to be a really special night with some of the Coyotes team members there as well. And it's cool that they're going to be supporting Rising that night. So you be there too. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. We hope to see you next month again. July 14th is the next Soccer Sunday.